Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into the end of the world with you. We're diving into the penultimate episode, episode 7. And yeah, emotions were starting to get high. Last episode, we were starting to get into some heavy emotional territory, and I feel like we're not out of the woods yet when it comes to that. Also, still don't know if Sweet Boy is supposed to be this undercover savior for the planet who also brought Doomsday upon us, or if he's just a regular person who's just sweet and optimistic and the planet's actually doomed and we're all, they're all gonna die. Don't know. But we're gonna dive into episode seven and see if we can get some more answers. Okay, well, what an emotional roller coaster this episode was. Lord, we're coming off the aftermath of last episode with um, Ritsu basically telling his story about everything that happened with um, Meguru's sister. And yes, you can see that Ritsu was in a very sensitive headspace. And he was just sitting out there the whole night, just looking at that fire, looking at that fire. And um, Matsumi wanted to go out and like go talk to him or rationalize with him or something. And Meguru, for whatever reason, was just like, mm -mm, mm -mm. and I'm not certain if that was her just saying he needs some time to be alone. If that's her kind of realizing what kind of headspace he's in and just like let him let him go. I don't know exactly, but I kind of wish that she didn't so that um, Matsumi could have gone out and talked to him. Like it all worked out in the end, but what if Matsumi didn't wake up after Ritsu came in and like was kissing on the forehead or whatever he was doing no, and apologized basically said i'm sorry echoing the same sentiment that meguru's sister sent to him via text after calling like 30 times she's like sorry bye and he's like i didn't know what it meant in the moment but like now in hindsight i'm like oh i know what that was so it's kind of echo echoing that same sort of sentiment it's like no no sir so what if Matsumi didn't wake up at that moment? Then, you know, we wouldn't have our Ritsu anymore. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had the beautiful waterfall moment. This, that, the other, the, the, you know, the little island getaway. Like, so there's the part of me that wishes that she hadn't intervened and would have just let him go out there and talk to Ritsu. But it, it worked out in the end. And maybe... Maybe it worked out this way for a reason, because who knows? Maybe had he gone out there and talked to Ritsu at that particular moment, they would have had a good conversation, but maybe it wouldn't have been enough. Maybe it wouldn't have been emotionally charged enough to really make Ritsu realize the consequences of his actions, how deeply that would have cut Matsumi, how much that would have hurt him, even though there's only allegedly a couple days left before the world ends, still, for those days, how much he would have been hurting. So maybe he needed Matsumi to come and tackle him like that and just have this big emotional unloading on him um, to really get him to realize how this action could really affect everyone else who's being left behind um but before he took the pill we got a couple little flashbacks of his childhood and some moments from his past this is one instance where i wish the series was just a little bit longer either in episode length or in the number of episodes because while what we got was great i would love to explore just a little bit more i would love because i feel like they gave me a really great setup for some deep diving exploration like he's his mother he was the result of i guess an illegitimate love affair um and him doing good in school and getting praise and accolades and whatnot makes his mother happy it brings like 
pride to her. It brings pride to the family. It helps to give her a good name. Not that she's out here seeking pride necessarily, but he's doing all of these things out of a way to basically help his mother. And then daddy comes into the picture when he's grown. He's like, hey, um, your stepbrother didn't get into that college. So could you just like not go to that college, that totally top school in all of Tokyo? You know, can you just not do that? And in my mind, I'm like, what the hell does that have to do with me? I've worked my ass off for the last like 17, 18 years of my life and got into this college. I deserve to go to this college. Why does my stepbrother, which I don't know the nature of the relationship, I'm assuming they're not close just from the general vibe I'm getting from daddy. I'm assuming he's not necessarily bringing Ritsu to the family dinners with his new wife and kids. Um, but so I'm like, I don't care that he didn't get into he didn't get into the college. Boo fucking who? OK. He failed. He tried a couple times and failed. Well, that's his problem. I'm sorry that I was good at school. I, I'm sorry. That's not my fault. Um, it's like, yeah, if you could just not go to that college, that'd be great. I'll um, pay your way. I'll take care of everything financially, which, you know, is a hard offer to pass up. But also I'm like, what benefit does the stepbrother get out of me not going to college? Is it a, a sort of thing like maybe the stepbrother was waitlisted? So he didn't get in, but he's waitlisted. So if Ritsu doesn't accept, then he off the waitlist. Like, OK, you can come in now and something like that. No, no, we didn't really explore. There's lots of things that we could have explored more. And I wish we had the time to explore. Them, but right now we really don't. Um, but it was a good sort of setup. And then we also had a little bit of flashback with him and Meguru's sister when they were just happy and hanging out and talking about exes and we got another little preview into Ritsu's mind where he's always been thinking about um, Matsumi and it makes me feel as though yeah even though back in college when they were dating he treated Matsumi not amazingly in the end when they were breaking up I'm choosing to see it as that was how he felt in the moment. But as he got older, he did a lot of reflection and realized the error of his ways and wanted to make amends with Matsumi, but never really had the opportunity to at that point. Like, you know, the moment had passed, it was a little too little too late. Um, so in the moment, yes, he was an absolute ass and mm, but he grew to realize that he did something bad and made his mistake and wanted to kind of make things better. Um, and he's realized, I guess, that he's always kind of loved, regardless of who he slept with or dated, this and the other, that kind of special place in his heart is still for Matsumi. Um, so he was making the attempt he'd made multiple attempts because he already said well i can't contact him because he's changed his number which tells me that he's already tried to contact him um he's like well what about social media didn't find him on social media but found one of their college friends and reaching out to him like hey can you give me his number and the friend was basically being a good friend in that as best a friend as he could be where it's like hey you weren't there for the aftermath of your relationship he was a wreck he went to shit it was awful and i don't think that you are someone that he wants to even think about again right now i don't think he wants to go through that again i don't want him to go through that again so i can't in good conscience give you his number and just kind of a protective measure which i'm like you know good i hope one day, if that were ever the case and someone contacted one of my friends which Technically has been the case after a breakup, but it was like right after a breakup when they started contacting friends and whatnot. But still, I hope if that were the case and I went, I wasn't on the receiving end of the breakup, I broke up with him. Um, but I hope if I were ever on the receiving end of like some sort of devastating breakup like that and, you know, had someone come back into the picture and contact my friends, my friends would be like, mm, no, no, you, 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 you fucked his heart up real good. And no, you, you. 
mm -mm, I can't let you do that again. Um, so at that point, you know, he stopped trying to reach out because he, the, the guilt and all of that stuff. So then we flash back to the present day and he takes a pill, Matsui tackles him, so spits out, spit it out, spit it out, and just this emotional unloading all over him and just the, the acting, the crying, the screaming, the yeah, everything. It was just so raw and just visceral and it just felt real. And I'm like, oh, just, just, just speak, speak your truth, speak your truth into this moment, baby. Um, and then from there, they were better. Matsumi said the next day, you know, I'm going to just turn a blind eye to it right now. Just focus on let's get in Meguru back home. And then they come across the the water pump that's connected to the river. So they end up in the river and, and the director is like, you know what? I'm going to give you guys just one last gift um, before the show ends, before the world potentially ends. I'm going to give you one last gift. Everybody take off your clothes and get in the water. Praise Jesus. I'm here for it. All right. Now we're going to have like seven minutes of shots with Ritsu just standing up soaking wet and we're gonna just keep flipping from showing the front of him and showing him from behind. We're gonna show you nipples and we're gonna show you ass. We're gonna show you cheekbones, we're gonna show you back. And I'm like, well, this is just a treat, thank you. And then of course we got Matsumi over here looking fine as a glass of wine too. We're like, okay, deliciousness, 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 deliciousness. And I'm like, okay, praise Jesus, how you doing? And then of course we have baby boy over there running, but I don't know how old he is, so we ain't gonna look at him right now. He, he's, he's just over there swimming with um, Meguru and that's fine. And you stay over there, little boy. Um, but in that moment, they had some more just great conversation. And like, now I'm fine. Like, between last episode and this episode, I am fine hopping aboard the ship. It's all I needed. All I needed was Ritsu to take accountability for his actions and to genuinely apologize from his heart. Those things have happened. They seem to be at a good level of understanding. You can feel the love. You can feel the affection. You can feel the chemistry kisses or whatever but you can feel all of the other things i'm like okay i can hop aboard this ship and he's just like will you please fall in love with me again and he's like a good call back to the first episode i thought you were good at seeing, telling when people were in love with you like mm -hmm. like cute cheeky and then in that moment we also had um <laughs> meguru and um yuma i was like why did i just forget his name um this watch walking on them kissing like oh they're that way and i'm like huh i guess we never really did cross that territory in front of them or with them like in my head i thought it was fairly obvious because i've been here along the ride for the whole time and i just assumed that at least yuma was aware like they they i felt like I could read the energy between them, but then again, Yuma is just, he is just a little high school boy, so his emotional maturity and being able to read the room and the situation may not be at its apex right now, so understandable. And then since uh, Meguru's been in the group, I don't know that they've really had a reason for that to come up in conversation, so I guess it's not surprising that they didn't know. But they're like, okay, let's just pretend like we didn't see anything. Let's go, let's go. And at first I wasn't sure if they were going to introduce like, oh no, they're not going to be comfortable with this idea storyline, but they, it seemed like we're moving past that. So they're, they, they're fine. They just might've been taken it back by like, oh goodness me. And then we got Meguru home finally, where her parents thought it was her sister come back to life. I'm like, no, that's not the case. Not, not quite. Um, and yeah, so we've got one episode left. I don't know if we're going to have time to get Yuma home. I don't know if in that episode, since we are in Meguru's house right now, if Yuma is going to see things in the house or if her parents are going to say things that are going to reveal that Meguru is actually um, a man in ladies' clothing. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. But yeah, we're going to dive in and find out so 
Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah.